and I'm Emily Henderson. Today's top story. Theresa May has announced the UK will expel 23 Russian diplomats. This has come after the Kremlin's deadline passed with no response to the Salisbury incident. Stephen Hawking has died at the age of 76. His research into black holes and the start of time transformed our view of the universe. At the age of 22, he was given only two years to live. He suffered from a rare form of motor neurone disease. Our reporter, Ella Milligan, spoke to the head of the University of Salford's Physics Society, Georgia Bradshaw, one of many scientists inspired by him. So can you tell me about how Stephen Hawking inspired you personally? Um, when I was younger, like, I've always had an interest in the stars and things like that and, the, and just the universe as a whole. And um, it was in my first year of college, really, like after I'd already had quite a big interest in physics, but no kind of concentrated fields. But then it was when re reading his um, book, A Brief History of Time. So can you tell me about the legacy Stephen Hawking will now leave? Aside from his contributions to science, I think he's been a very inspirational just person in general. Now, we've heard about the death of Sir Ken Dodd earlier this week. The tributes continue to pour in, and our reporter Richard Griffiths went to meet one local man whose life was changed by a chance meeting with the King of Comedy. Six or seven, Thomas West from Salford was diagnosed with polio as an infant. By the time he was a teenager, surgeons revealed he had a double curvature of the spine. With his lungs too weak to survive surgery, his mother took him on what turned out to be a very special trip. My mother had a friend from the war who lived in Coventry on a farm called Stella. I always called her Auntie Stella. And she arranged for us to go down to her Coventry for about three weeks uh, to try and clear my lungs. And the hospital thought it was a good idea. So we went down there and uh, one of the days while we were down there, we went into Coventry City Centre. Uh, and we noticed at the theatre Ken Dodd was on. Well, I loved Ken Dodd. He was, he was my idol, used to listen to him every Sunday. So anyway, when we come back, my mother, as a bit of a surprise for me, had asked my auntie Stella to phone the theatre to book it. Uh, but then she said, got some bad news, he's sold out. Uh, so I don't think we're able to go. So we said, OK. Anyway, out of the blue, my auntie Stella had told him a bit of the story and the theatre phoned back and we thought, oh, they've got a cancellation of some tickets. And what it was, they just said, we're not promising anything, but be, to ready, be ready for the following evening at five o'clock and a, a car's going to pick us up. And it was a, a gentleman in a uniform, you know, opening the doors and all that, I thought, really special. As the car approached the theatre, there was people outside in uniforms and this, that and the other. And as we got out of the car, this gentleman came over who, who presented himself as the manager of the theatre. But uh, he just said, if you'd like to follow us. And uh, we followed him through the theatre, up the stairs, and it was a big lush carpet and everything. And as, as, as we're walking along this corridor, he says, uh, my story's been told to Mr Dodd and he's invited you down this evening to see his matinee performance and uh, you've got the royal box i couldn't believe it anyway we went into the royal box sat there me me auntie stella and my mum, and watching ken dodd and he kept looking up for us and smiling and everything but uh absolutely loved the show and it was terrific i was dead excited and uh, just before the end of the show the manager came in and he said are you enjoying it i said love it he said well mr dodd wants you to come down to his dressing room after the show's finished. Anyway, we, we entered into the dressing room and there was Mr Dodd wiping the makeup off and this, that and the other. And he turned round with a tickling stick and he said, how tickled I am to meet you and I loved it. He said, I've been noticing you laughing up in the box. He says, so you've got a diploma from Nottingham University and it was a diploma, a degree for laughter. Lovely memories, absolutely lovely memories. Only a sad memory with Mr Dodd dying and I think he helped me pull through plus Stella, my auntie. <laughs> Jamie Carragher has been suspended by Sky for the rest of the season. The pundit was caught on camera spitting at a car after Liverpool were beaten by Manchester United. He has publicly apologised for the incident, calling it a moment of madness. And British astronaut Tim Peake was followed by millions during his time in space. Now visitors at the Museum of Science and Industry are able to see his spacesuit and rocket. Will Free went along to find out more. 
The Soyuz is home. Touchdown confirmed at uh, 4. It carried Tim Peake from Central space time. back to Earth Three, at 5,000 miles an hour. At the now the Soyuz capsule has landed in Manchester. It arrived after a slightly slower journey from York as part of a national tour. The idea of it is to inspire the next generation of astronauts to go up into space. What I really hope is that one of like the little children that we see here coming to visit it, looks at it, is really inspired into science and engineering and grows up and maybe becomes that astronaut that, you know, goes on the first trip to Mars. The spacesuit worn by Peak for his trip to and from the International Space Station has never been exhibited. The measurements used to make it have been kept a secret. So, so weirdly, everyone's been asking his height, Tim Peake's height, I think because really? of the spacesuit, which is why he's not revealed his height, which he only reveals his space height, which is 5 foot 11, because you get bigger in space because of the weak gravity. Peake spent 186 days in space and built up a huge fan base. School talks about the capsule are incredibly popular, but the mystery of space travel keeps all generations interested. What really struck me was the inside the parachute, um, well, the flap that has come off, it says, help people inside, take the key, put it in here and let them out. It's a really lovely exhibition to come to. It's nice having it round the corner. This piece of engineering is able to withstand temperatures of 1,500 degrees Celsius as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. But there's just one thing that many people want to know. How do you go to the toilet? in space. Um, now obviously they've got toilets on the International Space Station but whilst you're in the capsule you haven't. Um, so we tell them all about space pants um, which are these amazing like nappies basically. As soon as they feel uh, liquid water they absorb it like a sponge, turn it almost into a solid and then you're done, you're free, feel comfortable, ain't gonna fuse your suit. Tim Peake has just announced he will be returning to space for a second mission. Luckily for visitors a new suit and capsule will be created. And so what surprised you most about the exhibition? Um, well, it was the size of it. So they fit three astronauts in this tiny little capsule um, and it you know, plummets back down to Earth and they're basically on top of each other. It's just an incredibly small space. So if you suffer from claustrophobia, it's probably not the career choice for you, <laughs> yeah, maybe no, not. No, not at all. I would, um, yeah, I'd avoid going into space if you're claustrophobic. Fabulous. <laughs> now, moving on. Princess Road is one of the busiest routes into Manchester. A new 30 mile per hour speed limit is to be permanently slow down motorists. Our reporter, Madeline Hannant, has more. Motorists who travel on Princess Road and Princess Parkway are going to have to reduce their speed by the summer as a 30 mile per hour permanent traffic order has been given the green light by Manchester City Council. This comes after local residents signed a petition as there have been 84 crashes and two deaths on this road alone in the past three years. There is already a temporary traffic order on this road, however after its success and with consultation from the council it has been agreed to to make this a permanent change. Councillor Angelica Stragoa said, we are taking action after listening carefully to residents who raise concerns over road safety. On the six kilometre stretch of this road, there are lots of shops, amenities, houses, and also schools, including Wally Range High School and William Hume Grammar School. And such measures are being taken to have, help have the safety of our children and our residents, and also motorists on the road. Two Salford students are celebrating wins at the Northwest Royal Television Society Student Awards. Martina Moscariello and Harry Whitehead fought off competition from hundreds of entries to win Best News Piece and Best Short Feature. The event on Monday night was hosted by Manchester broadcast legends Lucy Meacock and Terry Christian. For Martina, the award came as a surprise. It's unreal. I never thought I would win an award for, for the project that I did last year. I mean, obviously it was, it was a good experience to be filming um, you know, refugees and asylum seekers and I'm, I'm proud of what I did, but I never thought it would be you know, award winning. Uh, that's all we've got time for this week. You can follow us on Twitter at Keys News. Goodbye. Goodbye.